In 1990, a revolutionary jet prototype took to the skies. This legendary craft redefined air superiority with its cutting-edge technology and stealth capabilities. Despite its impressive design and performance, the YF-23 was surprisingly defeated by its rival, a prototype that became the currently flown F-22 in the competition for the U.S. Air Force Advanced Tactical Fighter Program. It was this surprising loss that still sparks debates and discussions among experts and aviation enthusiasts, leaving many to question what could have been if the YF-23 had been chosen. So join me as we delve into the YF-23's history, from its design and development to its surprising loss, and uncover the true story behind this remarkable aircraft. In the late 1970s, Cold War hostilities were heating up between the United States and the Soviet Union. And in 1978, American reconnaissance satellites spotted two Soviet prototypes being tested, the Su-27 and the MiG-29. At the time, America had a formidable fleet of aircraft, but the U.S. Air Force realized that even with the F-14 and F-15, America's top fighters would quickly lose air superiority. So in 1981, they prompted the Advanced Tactical Fighter, or ATF, competition. And it's this competition that would create two state-of-the-art aircraft that were unlike anything the world had ever seen before. Following discussions with various aerospace companies, the Air Force decided that the ATF would regain air superiority by using stealth, supercruise, advanced composites and alloys, and fly-by-wire controls. In May of 1983, Pratt & Whitney and General Electric were chosen to develop the engines for these prototypes and more specific requirements for the ATF were settled upon. And so, in October of 1986, Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin were selected to compete in a 50-month demonstration and validation phase, from which the results were nothing short of radical. From its iconic diamond-shaped wings to its low and sleek V-shaped tail fins, the YF-23 appeared like something from the distant future. The unique wing and fuselage shape created a profile that helped to reduce aerodynamic drag, aiding its ability to efficiently supercruise. Its low slung tail fins could provide pitch and yaw maneuvers, which removed the need for horizontal stabilizers. Around the front of the fuselage, engineers implemented chines, which were used to improve directional stability and negated the need for forward canards, again reducing drag. Further adding to its high stealth design, the engineer's concept didn't require the use of a splitter plate to separate the main intakes from the fuselage. The YF-23 engineers placed gauzing panels at the leading edge of the twin air intakes, but through the use of special coarse material, the turbulent boundary layer of air could be diverted away from the engines and to the tops of the wings. Also affecting its unique appearance are the two S-shaped engine intakes that not only hid the highly reflective engines from radar, but could slow down the air entering them, enough to keep unwanted and potentially dangerous shockwaves from building up. In my favorite part, the odd and prominent exhaust troughs hid the engine's heat signature from below and the sides to lessen the threat of enemy heat tracking. To keep the rear from lighting on fire, these troughs used perforated titanium tiles that blew cool air through them to cool them off. On August 27, 1990, the first YF-23, or PAV-1, which PAV stands for Prototype Air Vehicle, equipped with two engines from Pratt & Whitney, took to the skies for the first time. PAV-1 was painted charcoal gray. It was nicknamed the Black Widow II, after Northrop's P-61 Black Widow used in World War II. It briefly had a red hourglass marking, resembling the marking on the underside of the Black Widow Spider before Northrop management had it removed, and tests for its supercruising abilities began soon thereafter. The second prototype, or PAB-2, which was painted in two shades of gray and nicknamed the Gray Ghost, made its first flight on October 26, and it was piloted by Jim Sandberg. The max supercruise speed of PAB-2 has never been publicly released, but it has been stated that it was significantly faster than PAB-1. But, on April 23, 1991, after four months of evaluation and successful testing of the YF-23, the U.S. Air Force announced that the Lockheed YF-22 was to fulfill the ATF contract. 
reasoning that while the YF-23 was more stealthy and cruised at higher speeds, the YF-22 with its advanced avionics and thrust vectoring had an advantage in maneuverability. The decision to choose the 22 over the 23 was a controversial one, and many have argued that the 23 was a superior aircraft. This left the two YF-23s to be placed in outdoor storage, ultimately disassembled and used for display. But there is still hope for the YF-23. Back in 1998, after US Congress refused to export the F-22, Japan wanted to develop their own next generation fighter. But after a lot of study and prototypes, Japan decided they would want to bring aboard international partners to build this plane. And in July of 2018, one such company that responded was Northrop Grumman. And there is speculation that it could offer a modernized version of the YF-23 to Japan, which is an exciting thought to say the least. So please like and subscribe because it would really help me out. And also, if you have any ideas for planes or other machines that you'd like me to make a video on in the future, just leave a comment down below. Thanks, see you guys in the next one.